Flukt von Novgorod at Hansa Park is arguably the most unique Gerslauer Eurofighter, and it also is a case of the best one. This coaster is the complete package. It includes exciting coaster elements, both indoors and outdoors, and it is also extremely well themed. So in this video, I will explain what makes Flukt von Novgorod so good. Before delving into the review, I need to note that there will be spoilers about the ride experience. As with my Schwerdeskarnen review, I will give timestamps where to advance to avoid the spoilers. I think the elements in this one are more widely known, particularly the initial coaster element, but I still want to respect the wishes of anyone who does not want to be spoiled. On that note, skip ahead to the time shown to avoid the history how this ride was developed, because it does spoil the ride's indoor elements. When Hansa Park wanted a new coaster in the late 2000s, they wanted something unique. At one point, they considered a Mauer X-Car coaster and later a spinning coaster model, but they ultimately settled on a Gerslauer Eurofighter. That model was famous for vertical lifts and beyond vertical drops. Hansa Park wanted that, plus a launch. In 2008, Gerslauer built Lena at Faroop Summerland. This was a powerful little LSM launch coaster. While it looked like a Eurofighter, it technically is a different model. The Eurofighter trains were not initially designed with launches in mind, hence why a new ride had to be designed. So when Hansa Park requested a Eurofighter with a launch, Gerslauer had to tweak the trains to feature the hardware to accommodate both a lift and a launch. They were ultimately successful, and a few later Eurofighters such as TMNT Shellraiser at Nickelodeon Universe would also combine both elements into one ride. Fluke von Novgorod was set to open in 2009 as Hansa Park's most ambitious coaster yet. At the time, it would be the park's most thrilling and best themed coaster. However, construction was delayed due to a harsh winter. The coaster track was fully assembled for the start of the 2009 season, but the ride's theming was incomplete. The dark ride section was missing many effects, and the ride's external tower was bare and devoid of all detail. The park made the decision to open the coaster anyway and complete it later for the 2010 season. The park was so pleased by Fluke von Novgorod that they returned to Gerslauer for two additional roller coasters in the following years. Both would incorporate extensive theming as well. First was Schlong von Midgard in 2011. This would be a family coaster. Second was Schwerdes Karna in 2015. This is not only the park's most thrilling coaster, but it has a case of the most intense coaster in all of Europe. This is widely considered to be Gerslauer's magnum opus, and it is not hard to see why. Fluke von Novgorod is placed in the back corner of Hansa Park, and it makes quite the impression. You have green track that blends in with the trees, but multiple elements run adjacent to the midways to build anticipation. Then you have the giant tower containing a portion of the ride. Novgorod is a Russian city, and the tower is a 14th century recreation of Russia's Kremlin, and it looks fantastic. It looks like it was teleported straight from an old city center. The queue continues the stellar appearance. After passing through a set of gates, you have a wooded path running alongside the building. Then you enter an indoor section of the queue. It is very atmospheric. It's a dimly lit and long stone hallway. You have some murals and screens providing some backstory. But the coolest feature has to be this hand guillotine that chops your hand off with an air blast. While this all looked cool, I was a bit lost where the story was the first time I experienced this attraction. The ride has an elaborate story. If you aren't a native German speaker, I highly recommend researching the ride's story in advance. That will help you understand the story and visuals more. From 2009 to 2020, the coaster is named Fluke von Novgorod which translates to Curse of Novgorod. From 2021 onwards, a T was added to the end of Fluke. This subtle change to Flukt von Novgorod changed the ride's meaning to Escape from Novgorod. Both describe the ride experience in my opinion. A German man's father disappeared. His last known location was the Russian city of Novgorod. An evil wizard named Volkov was publicly executed by Prince Ryerik but Volkov's spirit still haunts the woods around the city. Ryurik protects those inside the city, but travelers en route were subject to Volkov's curse. The ride's story is the rescue of the German man's father and escape from the city. All the visuals are definitely appreciated, not only from a storytelling perspective, 
but also because this ride routinely has one of the worst waits in the park, so you are at least entertained while waiting in line. While the park has fast dispatches and runs multiple trains, the ride still doesn't have the best capacity because each train holds just 8 riders. In both my visits to this park, it has sported a 45-60 to 60 minute wait. There's a wait time board at the ride's entrance that has been fairly accurate. For reference, the indoor section of the queue takes roughly 20-30 to 30 minutes alone. Midway through that indoor portion, there is a separate line for single riders. Not too many people use this because it occurs so late in the queue. I think it would be more utilized if you could access it sooner. If you are visiting alone, I would recommend using it still because I don't think the row matters too much in this coaster. In the regular line, you can pick your row if you have a preference. Each train has two rows of four. Riders are restrained by an over-the-shoulder harness. I wish this ride had lap bars like some of the newer Eurofighters. This ride isn't painful by any means, but there are some transitions with headbanging in the first half, so it is prudent to lean forwards to mitigate this at points. It is also worth noting that Hansa Park has a very strict loose article policy. They instruct riders to leave nothing in their pockets, and glasses are not allowed, even with a strap. The latter did make it a bit tricky for me to appreciate the dark ride elements, but rules are rules. Bins are provided on the load platform for your belongings. I am about to start talking about the first indoor section, so skip ahead to the time shown on screen to avoid any potential spoilers. Once dispatched, the door in front of you opens. You then have thematic music and lighting as you move forwards into the dark ride section. There are two scenes back to back. They combine animatronics with some projection mapping effects. It is very well done. Unless you look up the story in advance, you may be a little confused what's going on, but the quality of the sets for both a coaster and a regional park can certainly be appreciated by all. At the end of this section, you have a short but sharp dip downwards. It rides like the first drop out of Mystery Mine Station. You get a quick pop of airtime here. And the instant you return to your seat, you hit the ride's most notable coaster element, the ride's famous launch. It rapidly accelerates you to 62 miles per hour, or 100 kilometers per hour, in just 1.4 seconds. It is one of the fastest and most abrupt accelerations on any coaster. It packs a wallop. The launch itself is probably about as powerful as the other Gerslauer LSM launches like those on Lena or TMNT Shellraiser, but it is enhanced by two factors here. One, the drop into the launch has way more power here. Usually, it's a milder dip on the other Gerslauers. Two, you are enclosed in a dark tunnel to heighten the speed. One interesting tidbit about this launch is that I've seen a few sites report the top speed was increased from 53 miles per hour or 85.5 kilometers per hour in its opening year to its current speed in the second year. This would not be the only time that Hansa Park and Gerslauer would enhance a thrill element on one of their coasters, as they did again a few years later. After the launch, you have a snappy turn in the dark. It reminds me of the turn following the launch on Cedar Point's Maverick. It is a wild transition that also piles on the positive G's. Just watch your head because the suddenness can cause a head bang. You then twist upwards into a giant camelback. The crest is very tight, so you get some powerful and sustained ejector airtime. The quality of this airtime would be long on an Intamin Hyper. It's just a shame you have over-the-shoulder restraints instead of lap bars while experiencing negative G's this strong. Next is this large banked hill. It sort of looks like a wave turn. Unfortunately, it looks better than it rides. You won't get any airtime or notable forces here. Just a horizontal view of the park at the apex. You then rumble through a pretzel knot turnaround. And to be frank, I am not a big fan of this element. While you get solid positive G's in the valley in between the turns, the changes in direction will box your head around. You need to ride defensively here. Fortunately, the next element is a great one. It is a sweet heartline roll. You will get some great hang time here like you get on so many Gerslauer inversions. You then hit the brakes and head into Novgorod Tower. If you want to skip what happens next, please click to the time shown on screen. In front of you, there will be a vertical lift hill dimly illuminated. 
When rides have both a launch and a lift, I prefer if the launch comes second like the aforementioned Maverick. I think it's better for pacing. This allows the coaster section to flow better because you don't have that intermission mid-ride. Then the lights cut out and you start climbing. You stop halfway up the lift. There's a full-fledged animatronic to your left. After this short show scene plays out, you head up the lift. I've seen this ride with a posted height of 130 feet or 40 meters. I think that may be the height of the tower rather than the ride itself. The lift and drop do not feel nearly that tall. But atop the lift, you are thrown over a 97 degree beyond vertical plunge. This drop, like most of the second half, is in complete darkness and you get a strong burst of ejector airtime here, which is similar to the other Gerslauer Eurofighters out there. These drops never disappoint. I was a bit apprehensive what would follow because the ride had some questionable transitions in the first half and you couldn't see what was coming here, but fortunately the second half is very smooth. You then have another giant banked hill. It feels similar to the first one, but this one is considerably more exciting because you're enclosed on all sides, enhancing the speed. You then hop upwards, getting a little spurt of air time, and then you hit the brakes. The indoor section is over in a flash, but is fast and fun. You then have one more quick show scene on the brake run with another animatronic. Then you return to the station, ending the 2,297 foot or 700 meter long coaster. But the experience is not over yet. Novgorod's exit is quite interesting. Skip ahead to the time shown on screen if you want to avoid spoilers one last time. Since the load platform is elevated, you need to return back down to ground level. Option 1 is a boring old staircase. Option 2 is a slide. It's your average playground slide, but it's such an unexpected surprise that always brings a smile to my face. Then you have a maze. I cannot think of any other coaster putting something like this on the exit path. When you successfully solve it, you are rewarded with a trip to the gift shop. So what would I rate Fluke von Novgorod? I would give this coaster an 8 out of 10. This is a very good experience. You have some fantastic theming around the attraction, in the queue line, and during the coaster itself. Then that coaster section has some strong moments, both indoors and outdoors. Some of the elements are among the best offered on any Eurofighter. The ride does have two minor flaws though. One, the head banging. It's nothing too bad, but it does hamper a few elements. I really wish this ride had better restraints. 2. The pacing. A few of the elements don't quite do it for me, plus that other thing I noted in the spoiler section of the sequencing. But this ultimately is a really nice coaster. It is my second favorite ride in the park after Karnan, and it's my favorite Eurofighter, and I would not be surprised if that's the same for most enthusiasts. So those are my thoughts on Flucht von Novgorod at Hansa Park. What are your thoughts on this unique Gerslauer Eurofighter? Is it your favorite Eurofighter as well? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you consider subscribing, because there will be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.